Hi guys, today is Monday and um, I decide I wasn't going to originally vlog this morning but I decided to start vlogging because I feel like I've actually been having more contractions than I normally have and I haven't been timing them or seeing how far apart they are or anything because they definitely have like I would say at least a good 10 minutes or more they just don't seem it's regular enough for me to like recognize it but I don't know maybe I'll end up having a baby today so it is July 12th um yeah I'm currently having a contraction right now it's the kind like that I feel like you have to just sit and breathe through and um and I also feel it in my butt, <laughs> which is, I mean, I feel like pressure when I have these contractions. So, I don't know. I think I'm going to try to get some of the house cleaning done. Uh, Garrett was nice enough to let me just relax last night. And he did the dishes, so there's not that many dishes that I need to do at all. I do need to kind of tidy up the living room, and I have some laundry that I need to fold. So... I think I want to get all that stuff done right now, even though it's only like 8 o'clock, just so that, um, yeah, if my contractions do start getting closer together, then I don't have to worry about it. Um, I was eating some oatmeal, but I just don't feel, yeah, I don't know, I feel a little bit bleh to eat right now. I don't feel super starving, even though I know I need to, like, finish it, but... We'll see where the day takes us. Okay, so they my contractions were like 15 minutes apart, which isn't too close, but they're like decent contractions. Okay, so I sat down on my bed for a second so that I could put on my shoes, and when I stood up, I had a um, like a gush of water come out of me, so my water's breaking now. <laughs> I knew that I was definitely going into labor, uh, my contractions are still really irregular and stuff. I don't really expect them to get regular for a while, but um, Yeah, this I mean there's this spot as I was standing up and then like there's like a Puddle you can't really see very well, but there's like a big puddle right here on the floor It's honestly not that much water um, normally I think it feels like bigger gushes normally when I when it happens, so um, we'll see. <laughs> okay, so as I'm trying to put a diaper on right now, I had like another huge gush of fluid before I could even get it on. So, I mean, it's hard to tell, but I'm gonna officially say that I'm in labor. <laughs> okay, it is Monday, July 12th. Uh, 11:40 and my water just broke like twice. <laughs> well, it was like a small gush, and then um, when I tried to get the adult diaper, like I had another larger gush after that. But I'm 37 plus four today, I think. But we're gonna have a baby, which is exciting. I'm a little crampy already. Um. Which is good. My labor's kicking in faster, I think, than my other kids did. Normally, it took about two hours for my contractions to start. But it happened partially on my sheets, so I had to take off my sheets. And um, I uh, am going to fold two loads of laundry now <laughs> to get that done so that I don't have to worry about it. Alright, I haven't had any more consistent contractions since this morning and um, they've kind of come and gone and they haven't really gotten any stronger or any closer together and some hours I don't have any at all. I took a nap and the kids are asleep now but I'm going to use, um, I called my midwife and she recommended using a pump again and then to use some black cohosh so I'm going to put some of that in some juice and then use the pump and she said that to do that every 30 minutes until my contractions are consistent. It's like 6.30 right now and I'm gonna be calling her back at 8.30 to kind of make a plan from there. Um, and hopefully my contractions will 
start picking up. Hello. <laughs> we are heading to the birth center now. It's like 9 o'clock. I pumped a few times and used the black cohosh. Um, I think it was like three or four times and my contractions were only consistent when I was pumping and then when I would stop pumping they would go away. I got a shower and I used the birthing ball and um, I still don't feel any contractions. So uh, my midwife wanted to check on us though because it's an hour away from where we live um, and it's about to get late. So she's gonna check on us and check on the baby, make sure the baby sounds good and also check my cervix, see if maybe the baby's just in a bad position. Maybe my water didn't break all the way and that's why my labor's stalling so much. So she said that she could strip my membranes. Um, well, we'll see what we get when we get there, what goes on, but um, currently not having any contractions. My last contractions that I had were like 30 minutes ago. So it'll take about an hour to get there though and then Hopefully, I could get labor going. Um, I do end up, I mean, I end up risking out of the birth center at 24 hours after my water breaks. So I would have to go to the hospital if my labor doesn't start by tomorrow morning or early afternoon, I guess, at 11.30. Or, um, of course, if the baby doesn't sound good or anything like that, then I would have to go to the hospital. But. Um, I still feel like small movements. He hasn't been moving as much, but there's also a lot less room because I don't have any as much fluid. So hopefully things go good though. Okay, so it's actually a day later. When we had gone to the birth center, I had multiple different checks done on me. I had a um, cervical check, which I requested. She didn't necessarily need to do that, but I just wanted to know if any of the contractions that I had been having were progressing me in any way since they had been so irregular. Um, I was about three centimeters and 50% effaced, but to me that's really normal for my body before I go into labor for me to be like around three centimeters and 50 to 75% effaced, sometimes even like 100% effaced. My cervix was very high and posterior. She had to reach um, up and like under the baby's head basically in order to get to my cervix. Um, and the she did um, an exam where she took a swab. Um, she did like the amnio strip things where it tells you if it's your amniotic fluid and the swab, she did a culture where she looked under the microscope and there was no evidence that my water had broken. She said she couldn't find any pooling liquid um, and it basically every test that they had done indicated that my water hadn't broken. But it still really felt in my head that these tests must be wrong. Uh, there must be some sort of a false negative going on because I was still having contractions and they were painful contractions off and on. And it was, I mean, it was like my water had gushed. Like there was no question about whether I had like peed myself. After you have like uh, three kids, it's pretty easy to tell the difference between peeing yourself and your water breaking. And it wasn't urine. Um, it w didn't change the pH like urine would. But she did say that under the microscope, she saw a large amount, amount of um, like cervical and um, sperm cells. So I have a large amount of cervical fluid that came out apparently and that's her that was her conclusion so we ended up driving home we got home at like midnight I slept all night uh decent I kept waking up with some pretty hardcore contractions and uh they decided that they wanted me to go to the hospital the next morning to get a more def uh, de definitive test um just because I like I still felt like really sure that it was my water that had broken and since I was having some contractions they wanted to check to make sure 
and um, the hospital ran some tests and they also did a, another cervical check to see if I was like dilating in any way. I was still the exact same. So the doctor, the midwife that had done my cervical exam agreed with the exact same thing as the other midwife. I was three centimeters, 50% effaced still, still a very posterior cervix. And they did um, two different, um, I forget what they're called. It's like an am, it's like an amnio swab thing. It was a slightly different test than the one that I had had done at the other doctor's office. And um, they sent that off to the lab itself. And she did two of them just to make sure. Um, one, she did reaching a lot further back towards my cervix in like a different spot just to make sure that she covered all the bases. And they said that that came back negative. And um, I, like I still, I definitely did not pee myself, but it w apparently was not my water. And I've never in my life had that much cervical fluid gush out of me at one time, but it was a lot. And I have, I mean, I don't know why it would have gushed out of me when I had already been active during the day and I just sat down for like two seconds to put on my shoes and when I got back up it was like gushing out of me and then more came out of me at like two o'clock and where it was like another big gush. Um, so apparently my water did not break though which makes me feel incredibly stupid because I've already had three kids. But um, I also did not pee myself, so I do definitely know the difference between peeing and your water breaking, but I was thrown for a loop. I've still been having contractions, and uh, I think that I'm just having a lot of padromal labor. Um, she said that with the shape that my cervix is in, there could have been a pocket that formed um, like up behind baby's head. And when he moved, it caused the gushes to come out. I could have just had a lot of cervical fluid built up from like the night, basically, that had been released. Um, so I'm not technically in active labor at all, which is crazy. I really thought that I had my water break, but I guess it's just a false alarm. And I guess false alarms could definitely happen with your fourth kid. So I'm just going to try to, um, I don't know, it takes away like an empowering feeling from you when you're told that you're wrong about your own body. But I'm really just going to take it with a grain of salt and um, realize that this happens every single day where women think that their water break it breaks and it's not always them peeing themselves it could sometimes just be cervical fluid and it feels the exact same so if you've ever had gushes of cervical fluid come out and you really thought that it was your water um, I'm there with you with how baffling it is because it is exactly like your water breaking like it's exactly like it um, but I am, and I am so thankful though, because after the 24 hour mark, when we were headed to the hospital, we were at that point going to be risking out of giving birth at the birth center. But since they concluded that my water didn't break, I can still have a birth center birth. I'm going to be having an appointment on Monday and, um, that's next week where, um, it's just going to be a regular prenatal checkup. They just wanted to do it sooner. It was originally going to be on Wednesday just to check to see how things are going with me. I still have been having a lot of contractions. I have, um, haven't been pumping or anything or doing anything to like really encourage them besides like, um, just sitting on my birthing ball and stuff like that. And that's what happened so far though, but um, it is a day later now. Yesterday, we basically spent all day or half the day at the hospital doing um, like the lab checks and everything like that. They did pick up a lot of contractions. They were like every two minutes on the monitor, but they weren't like progressing me in any way. And I couldn't really feel most of them. Um, some of them were pretty painful, but most of them I couldn't feel at all. So. 
I definitely had like an irritable uterus and I think that partially was because I had just gotten checked the night before and then I had just gotten checked like once I got to the hospital. So that could definitely cause some contractions to happen. But that's where we're at today. So false alarm. <laughs> and um, so yeah, today is Thor's birthday though today. Uh, his actual birthday. We had a birthday party the other day that you guys had seen, but today is his actual birthday and I'm not going to be vlogging just because I want to spend time with him. He already had some pancakes today and we're just going to be relaxing as a family and giving him lots of love and cuddles, probably go to the park and hang out and whatnot. But he is two today and he was born uh, seven pounds, 14 ounces, uh, 20 and a half inches long. He was born at 2.13 p.m. after 18 hours of labor. I had him on my bed at home and I'm just, yeah, I'm just so thankful for him. He's such a little cutie. But that's all that I wanted to say. I just wanted to give you guys an update about what had happened. Um, yeah, definitely. It's, I feel like it's going to be soon though. I'm going to have the baby soon because these contractions sometimes are very intense and they kind of stop me. So I've been having a lot of like false labor, I feel like, but, um, that's it and I hope you guys enjoyed this video sorry if you were holding your breath the whole time waiting for a baby at the end but um, that is not the case and I will definitely be vlogging the whole experience once I actually do go into labor so I will talk to you guys later though bye I just want you I just need you